Hi guys, Brain here and welcome to another commentary video. Today it's going to be a little bit of a different one because today we're talking about Hex Face in the Darkness because this perk kind of riled me up. If you didn't know, there is a challenge in the current second level of the Tome to get eight screams uh, in a singular match while using the perk Hex Face of Darkness. And no, it's not like the other ones where you can equip Infectious, you can equip Pain Res, other perks that allow you to scream as well. Only screams generated by Hex Face of Darkness count for the challenge, so you literally do have to get value out of this perk. Now, I found this way, way, way more challenging than it ever had any right to be, and once I deduced why I found it challenging and what was actually going wrong in my matches with this perk, I realized that this perk fundamentally kind of is Garbo. <laughs> I was going to try to find a nice way to say that there, but um, it, the, the perk kind of sucks, and, it, and I, and I kind of hate it. So we're going to talk about why it's fundamentally not that great and another perk that's very very similar to that has a, a very very similar mindset so let's go ahead and talk about it so hex face of darkness is a very very unique hex perk it's not like you know devour or haunted where it just kind of happens on the map it's more like plaything where you have to do something in order to light a totem it becomes active mid-match once you enter a survivor by any means so m1 or m2 a uh, dull totem is lit on the map. Obviously, if there's no dull totems left, you can't do that. But if there's a totem ring on the map, it becomes lit, just like with Plaything. Now, the effect that it occurs is that all of the survivors will scream every 25 seconds if uh, they are outside of the terror radius of the killer, revealing their auras for two seconds each time. Now, this sounds like a really, really cool effect, and it's very, very interesting because it's kind of like a mix of of info, but also uh, interrupting people off of things, which can have a lot of synergy with other perks. Um, obviously, this is going to be a, a favorite for stealth killers, who obviously their whole thing is either having a short or absence of a terror radius. So on paper, this sounds like a really, really fun and interesting perk, but there is one part of this that I take issue with. So the bottom part here says that Hex Face of Darkness deactivates when the cursed survivor either enters the dying state or becomes healthy once again. Face of Darkness deactivates when the cursed survivor either enters the dying state or becomes healthy again. Okay, so what happened is when I came up to this challenge, the one where I have to get eight screams in a single trial, I had a lot of problems with this. I, I really, really struggled with it, and I really couldn't figure out why. I would always get up to like five or six of the of the screams, and then I would just, you know, win the match. Like the match, I would I would get the 4K and then like you know, we're only at like five or six screens. And I just kept thinking to myself, like, what am I doing wrong? I only had one match out of, I think it was three or four attempts that actually had the hex actually cleanse because you do have to snipe the totem before it deactivates, which makes it kind of elusive and hard to avoid as a survivor. But I only ever had it actually cleansed once. Every other time I was just only getting up to five or six screams before uh, the match would actually end, where I would get the 4K or the 3K and then letting somebody through hatch. And I kept wondering what I was doing wrong. It, co it comes back to this clause that I mentioned, that Hex Face of Darkness deactivates when this cursed survivor either enters the dying state or becomes healthy. So, I want to explain how this fundamentally goes against the purpose of Dead by Daylight, especially as the killer role. So as killer, you and Dead by Daylight, your job is to down and hook survivors as quick as possible so you can get them out of the game so they can stop doing all the gens. That is that is your job as killer. You defend the gens and you hook the survivors as quick as possible to try and remove them from the match so they can stop doing the gens. So, one of the biggest parts of this is having very, very quick and efficient chases. Ideally, when you're playing Dead by Daylight, you should have chases that last typically 15 to 25 seconds, give or take. You kind of don't want to be having chases that are longer than that, because I would even argue that even having like a 25 second chase, you're getting on the longer end, because time in DBD is gen time. The longer your chases last, that's three other survivors that are on gens, pushing them out, and that is going to result in your loss. So your chases, ergo, need to be very, very quick and efficient in order to, you know, hook that person, put them essentially in timeout so they can't do gens whilst pulling somebody else off of a gen to go unhook them while you start a chase with another person as well. That is the name of the game with Killer, is having those quick chases, downing people really quickly. That way, you can continue to pressure the map and hopefully win the match. The fundamental problem with this is that if you are having quick and efficient chases, you are only having 15 to 20 second chases, uh, you're putting them in the dying state pretty quickly. And if that deactivates the totem, that means that you're quite literally only getting value if your chases are bad. You are quite literally only getting value from this perk if the chases are bad, if your chases are really, really long and arduous and you're not able to down the survivor really quick, which, you know, means you're probably on the track, fast track to lose the match anyway, you're getting value out of this perk. However, if you're doing 
the right thing, which is downing the survivor as quick as possible, you're only leaving the totem up for a very, very brief period and not actually giving it enough time to be active and do its job, which is ridiculous. And that's not even to say that, like, hey, if they just, you know, adjusted this number, things would be fine. Because I do think that despite this effect being fun and interesting, I do think at the same time the effect is kind of useless as well. And that's where we're com going to compare it to another perk that has kind of a vaguely similar effect and what it wants you to do that is not very efficient. So we're going to bring in here one of the uh, the weakest perks in the game of Dead by Daylight for Killer. Good old Furtive Chase. Furtive Chase, you, pr you probably don't even know what this perk does because you never use it. Uh, you become obsessed with one survivor. And once you hook your obsession, you gain a token. And for each of these tokens, you have your Terradius in Chase. Only in Chase. Your Terradius in Chase reduced by four meters. And the obsession switches every time they are unhooked. So the point of Furtive Chase, the point of Furtive Chase, ideally, is that your Terradius shrinks for every time you hook the Obsession. Now, this is only in Chase, so essentially the gameplay style that the game wants you to do is while chasing someone, your Terradius is super small. So in the middle of a chase with another person, you break off and go find someone else who is going to be not able to be able to react as quickly because they heard your Terrius quote unquote far away because it was shrunken in the middle of the chase so they're caught off guard and you get the drop on them and you start a new chase like very suddenly with like a free hit because your Terrius was small however like i just explained with x-face of darkness um it's often just better to have a super quick and efficient chase with that one person that you found in the first place <laughs> trying to just break off and go find someone else unless it's like super convenient like the the, the teammate that you're the teammate sandbags the other person or you just happen to be in an area where they're all grouped up. Like most cases, rather than not, it's just the smarter play to just <laughs> have a very quick, efficient chase with the one person you're chasing instead of, you know, breaking off the chase to try and go get value from your perk with someone else and start another chase. It's simply just the better option to have that quick, efficient chase with that one person, get them on hook, and then start your 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 pressure that way. And Hex Face of Darkness, in, with its effect, if you want to get quote-unquote value of its effect, has a very, very similar problem. Hex Face of the Darkness has a very, very similar problem because all the screams that happen are outside of your tear radius. So all the screams that happen outside of your tear radius means that people are on average over 32 meters away from you while they're screaming. While this is like, I guess, sort of helpful from a, from a perspective of that, well, you know, you have info on where people are. In terms of actually capitalizing on info, you would have to do the similar thing that Furtive Chase wants to do, where you would see them and then break off mid-chase to go, you know, fight that other person, to go uh, start a chase with that other person. Now, you know, that it, it, split pressuring is a thing. Uh, it's not nearly as strong as it used to be because of really good med kids, circle of healing. So there's something to be said for that. But once again, realistically, it comes back down to the idea of you realistically should just be having short, efficient chases and not breaking off your chase every two seconds to try and get value out of your perk. It would just give you more value to just run up and have a 15, 20 second chase with the one dude that you started the chase with in the first place, in the first place, instead of trying to like break off mid chase, run across the map to try and get value out of Hex Face of Darkness by seeing someone outside your Terrier screaming. Like it just makes more sense to just keep chasing that person and down them, which is the same problem Furtive Chase has, which is why nobody uses that perk is because it really doesn't help you down the survivor quicker, and it only really works if you just disembark from your chase and waste a lot of time going to someone else and starting a whole brand new chase. These two perks just kind of fundamentally in their idea of, hey, split pressure in the middle of, of your chase that you, you, you was already going well because you already have an injury. This, this takes an injury to activate, so clearly you already got that first hit give up on that chase where you already invested that time you got the first injury give up on that and go find somebody else and that was the fundamental thing that was confusing me about this perk and is the thing that was preventing me from completing it was that i was having very very quick and efficient chases i was just downing people super quickly so like the the the, the perk literally quite literally wasn't up so what i had to do is i had to play huntress who has a 20 meter terrius sure her lullaby is very big but her actual terrius is only 20 meters and quite literally throw the match <laughs> That's what I had to do to get this challenge. I had to quite literally pick Huntress and quite literally throw the match. Like intentionally throw hatchets and miss and intentionally like tailgate people and not actually down them, just kind of follow them around. So I could give the perk more time to stay active, give the perk more time to actually do its thing. And that was just, 
incredibly frustrating that I had to willingly lose a match to get this challenge done. <laughs> like, willingly lose a match to get the challenge done. Uh, because uh, apparently if you ch if you just chase people and you do your job well as killer, this perk doesn't give you value. Which is just kind of silly. And kind of puts it in the same batch as Bird of Chase, so... Yeah, that's kind of stinky. But yeah, that's my gripe with X Face of Darkness. I think I found out the hard way that this perk is kind of dog. <laughs> but uh, maybe there's something that you guys have done or seen with this perk that I haven't. So I would love to hear that if this perk is actually is like secretly good or, or very niche on one killer. That'd be nice to know. Because currently I'm just looking at this perk and going, it just sounds a lot like Bird of Chase. And Bird of Chase is already one of the worst killer perks in the game. So I, I can't see myself running Face of Darkness or Face of the Darkness like outside of... Uh, challenges so yeah thank you so much for listening to me rant today i appreciate you so much but i do upload daily so i will see you tomorrow but if i do not i'll see you when i see you bye, -bye.